but you don't want to listen to stuff like this. And this is the stuff that keeps you in the game. Going to listen to these lectures and these discussions, and know that these are the, and you won't be in the game long enough to weather the normal ebb and flow of ups and downs in your equity curve because you're starting out, and you want to be a a rocket. Here you are on a launching pad. You just started learning ICT concepts or whatever. Maybe some of you want to leave what I'm teaching. That's fine. Go ahead. I wish you luck anyway. And you're going to do something else, but you're going to have that same expectation. You're now a rocket on a launching pad. And now because you sat down and you decided to give your time and attention to something else to learn how to do in trading, it owes you something. The market owes you something because you've studied. You've walked. You're entitled to shit. And a lot of you won't like the taste of it because it's reality. And you're going to see on these days, you can't make money. You can't, not consistently, not with any edge that's measurable or repeating. You will lose. And because you will blow your account, you're going to say everything you learned, which had no place in the day like today, was fake, flawed. It doesn't work. All the logic doesn't work. And that's frustration. That's all that is. That's not truth. That's not application of the concepts in the right conditions. Because if you read the fine print with ICT, it says we don't trade on these days because we don't expect the precision to be there. But you see folks out there looking for order blocks and complaining about how this doesn't work because you're trying to do what? You're trying to wake up, you're trying to make a wedding cake out of mud. Think about that. Like you're trying to take something out of a environment like swamp water. You want to bathe in that? Because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to do something with something that is not likely to even come close to the result you're trying to get. Because the environment is not conducive for you to be successful. It's not designed for that. So if you can be mature enough as a adult, and hopefully we're all adults here, you have to respect the measure of underlying risk. And one of the best tenants to a successful, consistently profitable trader is they are, num number one, respecting of risk, knowing that the first tenant to successful trading is preserving capital, not how much you can make. How much can I lose on this trade? And what can I afford to lose? And don't say because it's 2% I can afford to lose that because 2% for some of you is too much emotionally and psychologically. You're looking at these funded accounts and you're thinking, I'm gonna get me a $300,000 account. I'm gonna roll up all these accounts. And I'm gonna get a million dollars funded. Okay. So you're saying that you're gonna be comfortable with losing 20,000? No, you're not. <laughs> you're not. You're gonna lose your mind, okay? So there's two stages to understanding money management and risk management. You have to know what your account can afford to take as a loss. And then you have to test that theory psychologically and emotionally within yourself. And many of my students and other people out there have done this too. They have discovered that, hey, you know what? 2%, mm -mm, I can't do that. That's too much. And they go down to a quarter of 1%. What? You can't make money. Look, a quarter of 1%, you don't need a job. Because if you can consistently able to take that quarter of 1% risk and you're trading with five times that, do the math on any of those funded accounts. See, that's the problem with Habit Your Way mentorships and Dollar Menu mentors. They go out there and they show you this stuff that they're not doing. They'll show you stuff. Oh, well, you, you can take this order block. Here's a trade. And you listen to these cats. And they say, yeah, I took a trade. I think I took a trade. I think I got in here. I don't know where they're from. But if they took the trade, all they have to do is show exactly where they got in at. That's how you know you're listening to a liar. With me, you see my executions. You see exactly where I'm getting in. You see the price. You see my stock. You see when I'm managing it. You see where I'm expecting it to go. And there it is. That's someone that's been doing it and has been doing it for a long, long time and has no problem showing you. This is what it looks like. But you can't take risk management and money management and just say, okay, I learned this from that video. I learned this from this person. They said this, this is what they do. So I, I mean, it's applicable to me. It's not. It's not. So my advice for you, if you're trying to do these funded accounts this year, or maybe, you know, you probably already done this and you know exactly where I'm going with it. Once you get funded, do the least. Because especially if you're new, you don't know how you're going to be impulsive 
on days like this and other days that you didn't check the economic calendar. Another central tenant to someone that's a professional, they will not touch the market without knowing what the economic calendar is. Yep. That is the number one tenant to knowing what not to do. Think about it. When we get into wintertime and you see it's cloudy and such, weather drops real sudden, and you're in areas where what? Snow would likely happen. What do you do? Let me see. Expecting snow? The old hats, we can smell it just like the rain too in the warmer months. You can smell it coming. We've been, we've been around long enough. But young folks, they only see and engage with what's right in front of their face at the moment. Right now, they have short sightedness. They can only see right in front of them. And you have to make sure that you're planning ahead. You got to project the likely scenario for you to succeed, but also compensate along the way for detours that's going to be required that you didn't foresee. And some of those are going to be uncomfortable because you want to be like your teachers, your heroes. You want to do exactly what they did. And I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to do what I'm doing because you don't know what's going on in my brain at the time when I'm looking at price. None of my students can replicate what I'm doing. They can trade with my concepts and be profitable, but they can't do exactly what you see me doing. At the moment, I'm doing it exactly why I'm doing it. Why am I taking a partial at that price? Why did I wait for this to do that? See, you can just read it in the comment sections of the Twitter and or on the videos. How did he know? And some of these people are students <laughs> with me for a long time. And they know my stuff. But because I know what I'm trying to capture in the marketplace, and it might evolve as the market starts moving, I'm thinking, okay, I didn't expect that to present another opportunity to go more more time in. So now I'll add more to it there when I didn't expect to see it when the trade first started. So you're not going to know what's inside my internal dialogue that's going on constantly. And all that's changing and evolving every time a one minute candle's painting. And that's one of the things you're going to discover in February when we start doing live sessions. As I'm talking about the one and five minute candles, the weak individuals here that don't want to learn how to do this, they only want signals, they only want to learn a bias so they can go and push their buttons and hopefully get something correct to make some money. You're going to fail because you're going to miss the opportunity of knowing what it looks like to read every single candle from somebody that knows how to do it. And when to not expect it to work, because you have to know where is it likely that you're going to have your face torn off, you're going to lose a limb blow an account, get mad because you did something silly and it was a small loss and you go back and try to get it back and that becomes another loss. And then you do what? You push and you push and you push until you don't have your account anymore. All of that is absolutely avoidable. How is it avoidable? By knowing what I'm talking about right here. I'm telling you, these are the very days that starts that whole loser cycle where you get your account taken from you if you're funded or you blow it if it's real. Yours, your funds, your mon money, it's gone because you lost it. You pissed it away doing stupid stuff. Not sticking to number one rule, preserve capital. How do you preserve capital? Know where it's likely to cause you loss. If there is no advantage, if there is no odds in your favor, it's one-sided, like so overly in your favor to, to do well. And some of you are so new, you don't know what that means. That's what I classify as a low resistance liquidity run. You can't frame that on days like this. 30 years, and I've only had a handful, a handful of opportunities where it panned out for me. I was correct. I, honestly, I, I've, I've really considered writing five books. The fifth book is everything not to do in trading. <laughs> Nobody's buying that book. I mean, they probably will because of more of a curiosity and my name's attached to it. But think about it. You wouldn't likely see that as a New York bestseller. This would have known these things. This is better than teach me the right order block. This is better than tell me, how, uh, not keep, but how to know when a fair value gap or an imbalance stays open. See, you're all caught up with the sleight of hand, the bedazzlement of, oh, look at this, look at this trick. I wanna be able to do that in front of other people because then I'll get clout. Clout is shit. 
You want success. You want to be able to carve out your own paycheck and not need anybody to tell you what is likely to happen next. And you want to trust that you can do what? Keep your account in your hands. Not blow it, not go into severe drawdown. You're going to have drawdown, but you need to be able to know where those opportunities are likely to occur. And effort into knowing that, here's a promise that you this year. You will fail. You will never, ever be profitable unless you do these things. Identify where it's likely to cause you loss and consistently unlikely to present an opportunity for you to be profitable. Why wouldn't you want to listen to sound advice like that? It defies all logic when I see young folks, even older folks that have been trading for a while. Oh, but I've had an opportunity where I did this this one time. It's going to have to be always for you to be in there trying to do non-farm payroll or trying to guess what CPI is going to do or trying to guess what the reaction in the marketplace is going to be on a rate announcement. How many times have you seen the rate announcement come out as expected, in a, but really not? It does it the opposite. And they'll say, oh, well, the market, it, it priced in. They didn't say they priced it in before that rate announcement. Where, where's the news people and the talking heads and the financial experts that said, no, don't trust anything. The market's already priced in this. It's going to do that. They don't do that. They wait until after the effect of the marketplace this. You know, everybody knew that, right? Nobody knew that. I'm telling you, if anybody was going to know this stuff, folks, it would be me. I'm telling you, honestly, I have no advantage on these days. None. I have no advantage. Absolutely none. Come on. I mean... If I sit down, I tell you in a, a, a video or if I wrote a chapter. And said, this is the secret to being the chapter you're you're, you're going to fit distraction because you want a chapter like this. Twitter space. Here it is. It's blown several accounts and figured it out that, hey, this is a problem because you can have all for yourself for this year. All you want. But guess what? This because this right here, not defer, not I. You're going out there with your spear of, of protection, your shield. You have to have most wisdom before you can even implement money management. Fail. And some of you, especially young men, want to ignore that because you view that as weakness as a young man. That's somehow entity. No. Identifying weaknesses and knowing how to navigate them, that's strength. That's maturity. That is mastery. I mean, if you want to dabble, you know, like going to a casino and playing the one-armed bandits, you want to treat trading like that, you know, by all means, be my guest. I don't want students to think that way. I want them to understand this is an area in time where probabilities are so shifted against me. I have no business going in there regardless of what I see in the chart, period. End of story. It's done. It's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. It's but that's not exciting. That doesn't make you damn right it doesn't. And that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Because everybody else out there on social media that's trying really hard to be something they're not, they're floundering this year already. They're floundering, failing, falling on their face. All this supposed they have the highest technology of this and that and thing. And no, they can't be profitable. They're falling on their face. Their things don't work because they don't know this rule either. The markets are algorithmic. And if I can't find a plug-in for when the algorithm is likely to do certain things on certain days, guess what? <laughs> There's no advantage there. You're going to get chopped up, grounded down to bits. And in those instances, human nature being what that is, you're going to do what? I didn't do it hard enough. I didn't trade hard enough. I didn't trust the. I didn't trust my edge. I didn't trust my system. I got to keep going back in. I got to keep pushing the button. I got to keep going and taking my signals. I got to take my signal the next time, even though this is a loss. The book says, the guy on Twitter says, I got 20 years trading experience. I used to be a prop firm. I ain't never really shown anybody a real track record. I haven't really been in call markets beforehand, but I'm going to tell you that you got to keep pushing your edge and then you blow your account. You don't want that uncomfortable feeling of knowing that you shouldn't have been doing it. And you knew it every time you pushed the button. You knew each time, I shouldn't do this, but damn it, I gotta do something. I can't go home feeling like this. I knew I shouldn't have traded this day. I gotta find a way to get it back. If I get it back, I'll learn my lesson. I won't do it again. That's grade A bullshit. Folks, this is the books that you want. This is the chapters you wanna read. These are life lessons as a trader that you wanna understand and apply to yourself. And I know, I know, they're not fun. It's not pleasurable. It doesn't give you a dopamine hit. It doesn't make you feel empowered, but it should.
that's the perception of someone that's going through this stuff. I can look back and hear myself talking right now and say, if somebody would have just simply sat my young ass down, slapped me outside the head and said, listen, Huddleston, listen, you are not going to be successful because you're not paying attention to this. You'll find trade setups. They're going to pay you. Your, your account will grow. And where you're going to get knocked down is because you're not seeing this. And you're going to fall victim to this. So this is the most important thing right now. You're thinking about what indicator settings and what time frame. That's stupid. Because if you understand where the opportunities lie for high probability, low resistance. Some of you new are thinking, so you're bare. You just want to trade resistance. No, low resistance liquidity runs is when the market just freely just runs right quickly to a full liquidity or an inefficiency. And it's so one-sided and easy to see before it happens. It's quick. It delivers right away once you get in and it's just nice. That's how I teach my students how to trade. Are they all like that? No, but that's the environments that we're trading in. But we try to recognize areas that are problematic in creating those very instances for low resistance liquidity run signatures. So it's a hard thing for a new viewer or listener or student of me to digest this type of discussion because you want, and I understand this is exactly how I was and everybody's the same way. When you demonstrate prowess in the marketplace where they can buy and sell and profit, you expect a gimmick, you expect some trick or technique or concept or indicator or pattern or service or product to put your hands all over handle it and, and put it to, to work using it right away or go through the process of looking for it, okay? Unfortunately, this skill here is something that you have to carve out through pain and suffering and time. It's expensive. This lesson is very expensive because you won't learn to appreciate it until you have been doing it for years. And you're gonna look back in your journal and say, yeah, I can see clearly if I would have been trading on these days, which I'm telling you not to try to trade on, you would have lost your ass. And you can smile in comfort knowing that your wisdom and discipline, something that this generation is lacking. You get on social media, say whatever you want to say, carry on the way you want to carry on and think there's no consequences to that. And you think with that mindset, you're just going to go out here in these markets and you're just going to kill it and make all kinds of money. It's going to be a cakewalk for you. And then when you have your first losing trade, it goes into a series of losing trades. Now you're in drawdown. You're going to find out how fragile you really are. Because you're gonna do dumb shit. You're gonna make stupid decisions. You're gonna chase losses and parlay up to larger losses, thinking that you're gonna get it back. And you keep digging a hole deeper and you keep making that psychological wall higher, fortifying that wall of disbelief that you're gonna be successful. And all of this compounds into what? Toxic thinking, losing trader, failed trader. And all of that is easily, easily avoided. But it starts with discomfort. It starts by abstaining from these specific days in the marketplace. You all want to have a happy ending experience on these big movements. You don't. You want to be in a long-term relationship with the market. But the market's a cruel lover, and it does not like one-night stands. You need to be able to stay and have a Viagra effect. And the only way you have a Viagra effect in trading and your equity is avoiding too quick. <laughs> and honestly, you want to have a slow hand. You don't want to be quick to push the button on days like this. You say, yeah, it's all right. I don't need a Friday night floozy. I don't need a Sunday morning regret. Let me just sit here and I'll observe it and watch it from the end of the bar. And we'll see who leaves with them at the end of the night and who wakes up with an STD the following day. In the markets, everything looks good. Everything looks like you want to take it home. But then as soon as you sit down and you push the button on a day like this and you get wrecked, it's not a matter of, well, you know, I struck out this weekend. There's always next weekend. I'll work real hard, get my girl money up, go out to the clubs, and we'll see what I get then. That doesn't work like this in the marketplace because you're in control of your own actions and your decisions. And when you lose your mind in days like this where it just rips against you, 
do you have the discipline to say, you know what? If I put myself in a situation I can't correct today. It's going to take me time, maybe a couple of weeks to fix this. But I have thrown good money after bad. And I have to abstain from this. And it doesn't mean I'm a failed trader. It doesn't mean my opportunities that I look for are flawed. It doesn't mean that my logic is flawed. It just means that I made the poor choice to engage in a day that I was no excuse now for blowing your account. Because I'm telling you, I'm absolutely guaranteeing you that this. So if you did not listen to traded today and you got hurt, don't look at the rest of this day and think don't. You just had a bitter pill, a jagged bitter pill. Wash it down with time. Don't go in there trying to fix it by doing more of the same shit. Stop. Don't do anything. Let the market do whatever it's going to do today. And I promise you, there's still going to be a plethora of opportunities throughout this year. And this one, you want to remember it. You want to remember this day. Some of you probably already forgot about the CPI, the two of them that I outlined before I thought the market was going to go where I thought it was going to go. I told everybody this is what it did do, the opposite direction. Immediately ran like a bullet the other direction. Illustrating exactly why I can't get in front of those market moves. I don't have a statistical edge in that that's consistent. So if I know that, or would I be a good instructor or teacher to you if I know that's a weakness of mine? And I, I can't even prove to you, like I prove everything else, that I can trade with market maker models. I can trade with precision. I can get the targets. I can trade lows of the day, high of the day. Notice that I'm not doing that on non-farm payroll days or CPI days. I know where my my probabilities of success reside. And I know if I'm going to arm wrestle somebody, I'm not going to arm wrestle somebody that's bench pressing you know, 500 pounds, curling 200 pound dumbbells and has an arm larger than my head and has no neck. Okay. And literally looks like a, a mountain of muscle in front of me. What's my probabilities of beating that? It ain't happening. So why invite that? I know enough and it doesn't it doesn't affect me psychologically. I don't care if the opinion of others that are neophytes in this think that that's weakness because I can't trade ahead of these big moves when nobody else humanly can. You're asking for a superhero to step forward when that can't happen here because the markets are highly manipulated and just because these big news drivers come out and you might follow the fundamentals. You might feel like you have it figured out and maybe come out and release the data unless it's CPI because like I said CPI has already left the building. As soon as you see on your chart, it's too late and it's unforgiving. Many times the data will come out and say the data comes out that would be positive for the market, but it goes down immediately. How can you predict that? You can't. I can't. No one can. That's what makes fundamentals stupid to me. It'll fundamentally make you poor. This whole business is based on money. That's it. Money and psychology. Who has the weak mind? Who can be squeezed out? Who can be unseated, taken out of the trade, and have their seat taken by someone that's smarter? And it's all revolving around a TV guide schedule that we call an economic calendar. And sometimes there's a shit show on TV and you don't want to be wasting your time watching it. And that's non-farm payroll. The cast is always a dud. There's no plot and it never feels good. It's not a rom-com, it's not anything. It's not a date night flick, <laughs> okay? It's stupid to even waste your time with it. And I'm hoping that I won't have to talk about non-farm payroll ever again. Uh, hopefully I've illustrated that there is no necessity for you to build all this hope and engagement around one trading day out of one month out of the entire career that you're trying to frame. See, some of you young folks think that you have to do this. Like it, it's paramount that you learn how to trade these days. And here's the secret to it. Here's how you trade them. Have your charts off and do something else. You've traded it. On the sidelines is a win position all the time. It never loses. It never has drawdown. It never gets stopped out. And there's no commission costs. But it's a fucking winner every single time. Every single time. You don't think so? Look at that move today in all of your currencies and your indices and be offside. That's a losing position. But what if you were thinking about doing it but didn't do it and you would have gotten hurt, but you didn't? That's maturity. That's wisdom. That's strength. That's power. That's knowing 
when you're going to fail, but you succeed by not failing. None of these people teach this way because they have to engage you with dazzling you with this and that and gimmick this and gimmick that. That's not how you make money. That's how you get people pushing buttons. I don't want you pushing buttons. Think about how I teach. You study price for a long time before you even do any demo. Why? Because you have to discover where you're going to derail yourself. And these days are going to be a catalyst for weak-minded, undisciplined train wrecks. And it's not a popular subject. It's not a feel-good conversation, but it should be. You should feel like you're empowered now. You know what? My teacher said that he doesn't have to worry about trading those days and he can still find setups. And yes, these are days where it's a gamble. So I'm not going to put that pressure on me to try to trade and expect precision on these days when it's not possible. How, uh, how wonderful and how liberating is that? That's just one extra thing that you don't have to contend with and worry about and obsessively compulsively fear. But everybody else is gonna try to crack the code on these days. They want to be the ones that figured it out. Hey, if someone can figure it out, consistently do it, I'd be their student. I ain't got no shame in that. That's something that I couldn't do. But I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And how can I know that in confidence? Because the hand behind this market and the things that make this world spin they're always going to be in control. They're going to manipulate. And when there's enough money to be taken on one side of the marketplace, that's where it's going. That's it. Wherever the most money is, that's the resistance. That's how your mindset should be going forward because that's how the hand operates. So hopefully you found this one insightful. Hopefully I was able to more or less nail down why it is that I don't trade non-farm payroll. And you can apply this to CPI. You can also apply it to ahead of FOMC rate announcements. Like I don't have a position on ahead of FOMC rate announcements. Now after, only on, listen to this folks, only after CPI has hit the market and created its craziness, then I'll look to trade maybe 30 minutes after the news driver hits. So 30 minutes after CPI, then yeah, you can trade that. Uh, later in the day, you know, in the PM session, if it's still you know, something that's of interest, you can study non-farm payroll in the afternoon session. But generally, it's going into the weekend. Nobody's really caring about it more, and usually the volatility is very light. So I don't. that's why I don't touch it. FOMC, rate announcements. When the first move happens, I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for what it should do. But when it does whatever it's going to do, then I know at 2.30, that's the, that's the other direction. Not all the time, but you're going to see about 80% of the time, that's usually what FOMC does. The first move is a Judas. And sometimes it's even wrong based on what I'm, well, not it's wrong, but I'm wrong in my expectation of what it's likely to do. But it's okay because I'm waiting for that penny to drop. Once the market does what it's going to do based on that initial rate announcement hitting the marketplace, then I know. I'm going to try to do the opposite direction because there's so much money already in there based on what's been priced in. Stops. Liquidity. And that's what the 230 run goes right to and tears her face off. That's how I trade on FMC rate announcement phase after the fact. I don't trade in the morning session because chances are if I do something wrong there, human psychology means that I have to do what? I got to get it back. So I teach my students not to do that too, because it, you don't want to go into FOMC in the afternoon after 2.30 when the real move takes place with drawdown, because you're going to be enticed to do what? More than you should, and you're going to be emotionally attached to the trade because you have something that you've lost. So you don't want to do that. And that's, that's it for today. Hopefully you found it helpful. 
hopefully I've answered some questions in regards to what it is I teach and why I teach the way I teach about it. And you don't need these days to do well. I promise. Until next time, be safe.